Okay, so there's two possibilities. Uh, one would be sort of an imaginary view from underneath where you're looking up, and the other one, which is the one I always do, I guess, is uh, looking down from above. So I'm going to take the view here. Um, like this, from above, uh, my coordinate system is going to be like this. And then I, I guess I'll just choose my own point on the circle for us to analyze so that everybody's doing the same thing. Um, let's choose this point. There are really only four points on circles that we're ever going to use. You could do other ones, but you'd have to use sine and cosine, so it's kind of just more cumbersome. So we're always going to use either the point on the circle in the negative x over here, positive x over here, positive y or negative y. Those are the only four points we have to ever deal with. Okay, so now um, take a second and draw the direction of the velocity vector. Okay, the centripetal acceleration goes from the object toward the center of the circle. Now that we know the direction of the centripetal acceleration, calculate its magnitude and come up with the components of the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so um, the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration is the speed squared, so 6 squared, divided by the radius of this circle, which is just the length of that string. So divided by 0.2. And um, so you get 36 divided by 0.2, um, which is 180 meters per second squared. You can see that that vector is in the positive x direction. And so the centripetal acceleration vector is 180, 0. And since there's no tangential acceleration, this is the total acceleration. Okay, so now, um, anybody have any questions up to this point? We've calculated the acceleration vector. Um, now we have to use Newton's second law, and there's something going on that we haven't seen before, uh, and that is um, there are forces happening that do not appear in our coordinate system. Okay, like think about, this is a view from above, right? Um, and so, in this view, what's the direction of the weight force of this object? Straight into the page. You see that? And we don't have any way to represent a vector straight into the page in this coordinate system. We'd have to be doing 3D problems to do that. Okay? And so, anytime that happens, that a force is going straight into the page or straight out of the page, you can just call it zero. Okay? So uh, we don't have to worry about the weight force. There's another force we don't have to worry about, the normal force from the surface. That would be pushing out. And that's also not acting in this plane. And so a free body diagram uh, just looks like this. Uh, we have the ball. We have a pulling force from the cable. And I'll call that force T. And uh, we have no weight or normal force because those are out of the plane.
Okay, so now that we have this free body diagram, this is a complete free body diagram, and we have the acceleration, take a few minutes and see if you can calculate that force T. Okay, so we're going to go to Newton's second law. From the free body diagram, the only force, you know, this uh, cable force is in the positive x direction. So we have the force T0 is equal to the mass of 0 0.06 times the acceleration, which is 180, 0. And uh, the x equation tells us that t is equal to 10.8 newtons. And so if you are going to do this for some reason, now you know that that string that you use has to be able to support a tension of at least 10.8 newtons, or else it'll break as you do this. Any questions about that? Okay, uh, let's stop there for today, and uh, I'll do another example or two next time, and then we'll get into tetherball problems. Um, but Wednesday is the test, so don't forget about that.